it's an exciting day down here. Uh, we're uh, bringing back the 55 F100. Um, today I'm going to work on pulling the motor and trans out of it because we are no longer using the LS and Turbo 350 trans that we've got in it right now. We're actually going to put a 24 valve Cummins in it. So it's going to look uh, a little bit different and uh, it's going to be fun. So let's get that thing inside. All right, so we got the truck back inside here. Um, about to throw it up on the lift so we can uh, undo the motor mounts then pop out the motor that's in there right now. Um, our Cummins and 47RE are on their way down here right now for this thing. So that's pretty exciting. I'm really pumped for it. We've been meaning to pick it up the last few days. Guy hasn't been able to get uh, meet up with us. So he's like, hey man, you know what? I'll just bring it down to you. And we're like, that's awesome. So here we are working and getting a motor and trans delivered. It's pretty nice. But uh, I'm gonna get plugging away on this thing and I'll put you guys up on the stand so you guys can kind of see what's going on anyway. All right, so here's the old motor and trans literally just lying in there because I was gonna pick it out and I was gonna go through it and freshen it up and all that, yada, yada. Um, Got to pop out the old motor mounts because we're no longer gonna be using those. Um, yeah, and then once all that stuff's out, I'm gonna start running brake lines on this thing too so that that's all done because I don't really want to deal with it whenever, you know, we're in the midst of other fun things. So um, I think that's the plan for today anyway. But yeah, I just gotta yank that. Here's the brake line for it actually. Uh, I had to pick up some more fittings today as well, but she's in here and ready to get taken apart. All right, so we got our motor. Trans is already inside. But I'm gonna pressure wash this thing, clean it up, because she's pretty nasty, pretty greasy, and we don't want to be putting that back in a vehicle that we're gonna sell. So we're going to uh, clean up all this junk. And then I think we're gonna call it for the day. I haven't even done anything on the truck. Just been busy running around. Didn't get anything accomplished that I wanted to. But we're gonna clean this, because I just picked up a little cheap pressure washer from Guy. So I'm gonna give her a whirl. So, done pressure washing it now. It's a lot cleaner than what it was. It's not perfect by any means because it's got a lot of heavily caked on stuff, but got off the majority, which is what I was really going for anyway. Didn't need to be perfect, just a lot better than what it was. But now, I'm just gonna back this whole thing up in there, use the picker, pick it off, and set it next to the trans until uh, we can get it stuffed in there. So now that we got the engine pulled out, which is my wife, um, we've got you know the new one to go in. Look how massive this one is compared to the old engine in trans. It it makes that look really really small. I mean, mind you, it is really small, but this thing is just giant compared to it. Um, I did some measuring, and it will fit in there. Uh, we can either leave the the that fan, or we can put electric fan on it which is probably what we'll do and then that'll save us like a radiator's width in there so we can actually put a radiator in this thing because that would be helpful um but yeah so we got it all 
empty. So now I can run all the brake lines and then we can try mocking this monster up in there and seeing how it looks. All right, guys, it's the next morning. <clears throat> Finally gonna start running brake lines on this thing like I've been saying I'm going to do. Um, so just gotta run the one teed off to the front and then just one line right to the back and then it splits off on the rear axle. Um, I gotta look on the rear axle and see if I need a brake, brake hose for back there or not. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's still there, but they might have cut it whenever they removed that rear axle. So <clears throat> that's what I'm gonna do. I'll uh, kind of bring you guys along the way, show you how we run brake lines on these things. Got the uh, old fittings out, and I thought that these were just going to be a standard flare. They're a freaking bubble flare, so I bought the wrong fittings, and I don't have a bubble flare tool, so I have to call up to advance once they open here at, in like 20 minutes, and uh, see if they can send me out a bubble flare tool and some new fittings. And I bought the wrong freaking T anyway, so but. A straight through tee like that and it's supposed to have the uh you know the little lens that the lines will seat into so i'm just stupid and grabbed the wrong one because i wasn't paying attention just trying to hurry up and get out of there so i will call them once they open and get those coming but for now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna mount the lines on the frame here you know like that and same thing on the other side um I'll do for those, we'll just throw a self tapper in them. It's plenty good for, you know, holding on a freaking brake line. So I'm not worried about it, not one bit. Well, we got the lines ran to where they need to go. Um, Advance is bringing me out a couple of fittings and the bubble flare tool. Um, and a brake hose for the rear because the one that's on there is gone. So, or was on there. So, um, I'll kind of show you what we got going on here. It's not perfect. We're not, I don't have any of the special like bendy tools or nothing like that. So, you get what you get and it's good enough. Got this one running over here, down along the cross member, and then up and over. Um, obviously, this will be tucked down a little closer. I just don't have the ends along with that one there. And then this one, I'm waiting on a fitting for as well for the rear brakes. So that runs down all the way to the back of the truck. All the way back here. Right here. Um, it really needs to be like here, but I left a bunch of extra just in case I didn't know where I was gonna run that yet. Um, so once I get out here, we can do that stuff. But I think right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to yank the grill off this thing. Um, so we have a clear shot to shoehorn that monstrosity of a motor into this thing. So that's uh, what I'm going to do now. So this is absolutely massive compared to that. Um, so right now we're trying to shoehorn this big son of a gun into here to get, get some measurements. About 21, overall leg, 59, 
top to bottom about 28. Okay, again, 29, 28, 59. Thirty-six. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to knock that 80. fan off. Thirty-six, eighty. Thirty-six, eighty. Thirty-six, eighty. Thirty-five. She's a big girl. A little bigger. She's a big girl. Yeah, we're gonna take this fan off because otherwise, getting rid of this is gonna give us a lot more room for like things like a radiator. An intercooler. But I think on these, you don't have to run a radiator. Oh, that's... A, you just fill the block full of concrete and let her rip, or what? Oh, no, you put water in it. Oh, okay. But you just, you know, you loop this back around to the, the one that comes out on the bottom, and they're they're known as a no-radiator looping engine. Oh, wow. So we're going to put you guys up on the stand uh, before you guys get any more smart by uh, the, <laughs> the, the stuff that Jordan says, so... I'm gonna put you up on the stand right there. You like that? That thing is sweet. Um, but we're gonna put you up there so you can, you know, kind of watch us attempting to shoehorn this massive turd into this massive turd. No, it's a little turd. It's a big turd and a little sphincter. Yes. <laughs> it ain't so. gonna end well. <laughs> So the engine is sitting in there, and my goodness, look how good it fits. Just sits in there ever so nicely. It is actually just 100% sitting in there, so it's <laughs> like leaned over and stuff, but um, that'll all be you know, straightened up once this is all done. We gotta notch out this cross member down here so it can sit a little bit lower here, and then we gotta build a trans mount on the back. But I think the old cross member is in the right spot. Oh, it's a little bit far forward, but that's all right. We can move that cross member and put the trans mount where it needs to be. But it all fits ever so nicely. Um, got a whole bunch of stuff ordered for the wiring harness on this thing. I got switches, um, relays, all the good stuff. So then we can- Simplify. Yeah, simplify this. Um, I do believe that this is a uh, manual trans harness, though. Um, I don't know if this truck had a manual in it or what, but that's what it appears. Um, so there is no wiring for my transmission. So I hit up our guy and asked him if it was from a manual trans, and if, he, and if it was, if I can get a different harness and ECU before I botch up this one and put a full manual valve body in that uh, 47 RE. Because, uh, I don't know, full manual valve bodies are fun, but they're kind of expensive, and so are transmission controllers. So, we're gonna try and avoid that, but worst comes to worst, we'll have to do something like that, because yeah. we're not putting a manual in this truck. Nope. That's a big no-no. It's fun, but the people that buy stuff Generally, the people who can afford the stuff are the older guys because they want to jump in at their stick of shifting. We like that stuff. Yeah, we like to shift, but nobody else does, apparently. So, anything that's manual doesn't sell. If it is an automatic, it sells pretty easily. So, this thing, we're going to probably start making motor mounts and trans mount. And then... Uh, get it sitting level. Yeah. Get it sitting level. level. angle. We're gonna probably pop the front clip off because it's really easy to pop the front clip off. It's like three bolts. And then we can work around here a little bit better. We already got it sitting where it needs to. We know that it's going to fit. So that's the only reason why the fenders were left on here whenever we were putting it in, um, even though it's kind of a pain in the butt because it's wider than what this is. So we had to bend them and stuff to get it to work. But you guys kind of saw that. 
So yeah, now we just got to build all that stuff and then figure out how we're going to run our steering because this motor mount is somewhat in the way of the steering. So we're probably going to have to like put a U-joint down there, come over and then up with a U-joint and then over. And I, I don't know, it's a lot of U-joints, but we can build some hangers on them. So yeah, we really try to keep it to, to run in two. <clears throat> yeah, not two and then three. Yeah. But by the time this is situated where it needs to be lower and everything, we'll have a better idea. I think you might get away with the one that goes on there and the one that goes there, and it, it might yeah. clear. If we get lucky. Or like the fenderless drill hole in it and see if we can just run it straight through. Yeah, there. on the fenderless rat rod, if you guys didn't see that, the motor mount went down solid. We drilled a hole through it, and the steering went right, right through it. You could still undo the the U-joints and get your steering column out if you ever needed to. Right, so not that big of a deal. Oh, hey, you know what I thought about? <laughs> we got that Cummins chassis outside. We can just whack the motor mounts off of and weld into here. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if Christian told you when we bought this, we got motor, trans, and a whole chassis. For a secret undiscl undisclosed price. We have a really good Cummins guy. If you're looking for Cummins parts, we have a guy for you. Yeah. You don't get motors, we get motors. Yeah, you guys can't have them. They all come to us <laughs> straight from every truck into um, all of our trucks. Originally, we had planned on this motor, trans, and that frame, we were going to build another build similar to the 51. But um, then I was like, hey, you know what? We've got this 55 that's still not done. It's like almost there, but needs motor and trans and wiring done and the brake lines and that's in steering. Basically, that's and, it. and that glass, piddly yeah. stuff. But this is way cooler and honestly easier than that LS. So here we are, but. I don't know about easier, but. I don't know, it's cooler. Yeah, it's way cooler. I'll agree with that, because I'm, all right, so by a show of hands down in the comments, how many of you have seen a 24 valve Cummins in a 55 Ford F100 before? No, no, no. I want, I want a different show of hands. I want who's happier to see this in there than the Chevy LS. Yeah. So let, let us let, know which ones. Let us know down yonder, down in there, what you guys think. Because also it helps us know which ones should be built in the future, which ones you guys enjoy seeing. Right. Yeah, because if you guys don't enjoy seeing it, we're probably not going to build them anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. These ones we sell, so we don't. Care. Yeah, we we don't care what you guys think. Um, so Jeez, oh, look, just lost ten subscribers. <laughs> yeah. And they, what? They don't care what we think. <laughs>
quite a bit by the previous owner. So like this is where, you know, your front, uh, well, the rad support really would sit and bolt in here while well, it sits up here. So this would have to get moved forward anyway. So we'll probably just build a new cross member and put in there and then hack off the fronts of these so they're not sticking out past the valance because they stick out like that much. So we're gonna run that other bumper on this. Ooh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we've got another bumper that we might try and make work because it looks freaking sweet. We can make here. it work, it'll look perfect. Yeah. Christian, what happened here? So, um, I, there was a fire extinguisher laying in there and somehow I bumped it and it went <laughs> and uh, puked all over inside there. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, Zach was sitting on that tire whenever it went off too, so we got covered in it. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, but yeah, we gotta get a new uh, water pump here because that one's junk. Um, I'm trying to track down a wiring harness for the trans and a PCM out of one of these trucks because I didn't know that we needed that stuff until like now. So um, that's cool. But uh, so we're trying to figure out all that jazz and uh we'll just make some mounts and do it easy yeah the mounts and stuff are easy we're not gonna make them we're gonna cut them off the other one i thought well it doesn't matter either way either way we gotta get welded so we're making them yeah exactly so yeah but uh it's not too heavy to where our springs are fully compressed or nothing mind you i did cut the crap out of these ones i think like two and three quarter springs out of these because that LS didn't even make it drop an inch like didn't move it at all you had to stand in there and jump for it to the suspension move so it's really stiff but now that we got this big heavy motor and trans in here we got to get new ones and put in there so our ride height is right should so, be a little better yeah should be so push it down to where it belongs so Gonna, we're gonna get to doing other things now. So okay, bye. Goodbye. Okay, All right. So if you can see, this is a factory motor mount out of the old Dodge pickup truck, and it fits in there just about perfect. Just got to make a little filler piece in there, and I can weld that one in. Once I just have to jack the motor up a little bit, so then whenever I weld it, and the motor sits back down. Whenever it settles, it'll sit a little bit lower. And then over here. I had issues running into the steering, so I had to chop a whole bunch of this off, and then we're gonna utilize one of the bolt holes for the original motor mounts for the Crown Vic, and then we'll run a brace from there to here. But the steering, where did my steering shaft go? Oh, it's right here. It is kind of goofy. If I can get it to go in there. You can kind of get the idea of how it has to run. So it runs right here where this would come over and meet this. So it wouldn't, right here it doesn't look too bad. Like I could just like notch this out and it'd be fine. But the problem is, is that it's going to be so much further in, it's going to be literally right next to this. And it's going to have no strength right there. So it could possibly crush this. So what we'll do is we'll make a flat piece to go on the bottom utilize that one hole to support this corner and then over here we'll build a brace that comes over to the frame rail here and we will uh, weld that all in and it'll be nice and sturdy for this big motor so i'm going to get to doing that kind of stuff it's kind of boring to watch just because you know it's a lot of cut grind take off measure cut grind all that kind of jazz so it's not a whole lot of fun but gotta do it so yeah. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for this episode on the uh, uh, 55 F100. Um, it's really windy out here right now. A bunch of sand. So um, stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully we'll be uh, finishing up motor mounts, stuff like that, getting wiring and stuff done. But as of right now, it won't be until probably next week because we are packed full of customer vehicles again. Um, there will be a new video, hopefully sometime soon as well, on the Jetta truck. Um, we've been using it a whole bunch. Things awesome to have. But, um, 
yeah, we just haven't had a whole lot of time to shoot more videos, so stay tuned and uh, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends about us if they're into the uh, same kind of stuff that we are, so thanks, have a good day.